Welcome to the Theater of Magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus Pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed Magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight Madness. Tiger Song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The Theater awaits. G'day guys, welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg and we're not doing the normal start up in the, uh, in the theatre today. We're straight in the car, we're on the road and we're doing a, a real pickup of a very important machine to me uh, from my youth. But I'll tell you, like Sunday night, I was ready to just go to bed and for some reason I thought I'll have a quick check of of Gumtree and I checked it during the day so it was like really no reason for me to be checking it again really right at night it was pretty late too and uh, <clears throat> sure enough open it up and I wasn't expecting anything but then yeah bang boom this cabinet appears in front of me and I'm like oh no <laughs> it's like, I don't have any room where am I gonna put this cabinet if I if I buy it and you know I mean straight away I was like I've got to have this and then the price was was great uh, I mean it's not working and um, of course I haven't told you what it is yet right but <laughs> we'll get to that uh, but it's not working it is complete though and uh, apparently it's playing blind I think he said that there was some problem maybe with the horizontal or vertical hold which tends to mean that there's probably something wrong with the chassis um, unless of course it's not getting five volts properly I'm not sure yet uh, but anyway it, it's complete that's the main thing I could always get the chassis fixed that's no problem the it looks like the uh, the front glass has got some pretty deep scratches in it um, so that's not so good but the general cabinet looks like it's actually in really good shape so what is it? What what am I buying? Well, it's a Hyper Olympic, and for you US people out there, you'll know this as track and field in the states. Everywhere else, it was released as Hyper Olympic, which is all very confusing, really. It's a Konami game, and it's a little bit well confusing <laughs> when they release the same game. Uh, with, with slightly different names and of course they changed the graphics as well at the front front end but the game is exactly the same so yeah track and field or, or hyper olympic and, and for me you know growing up um, that was a staple game when we used to go to the ice skating rink and the ice skating rink you know when you were 13 or 14 was a really social place to go <laughs> well, like these days everyone's sitting behind uh apps and meeting via apps they're doing all their communication by text back in the old days we used to meet face to face how about that and ice skating was one of those uh, real cool social venues we'd look forward to every weekend and of course at the rink back then it had a whole section filled with arcade machines and hyper olympic was was one there and every single time we would go ice skating we would play that game and we would I just keep pumping 20 cent pieces into that machine. Of course, this is in New Zealand where they where they take 20s, not quarters like you in the uh, in the US or pence like you in the UK or whatever other uh, denomination around the world where you might be watching this. And um, the game itself, I mean, you know, it, it was classic because back back then it was really really a different game. They were very different from you know the you know the shoot 'em ups and you know even Donkey Kong and stuff. I mean Donkey Kong was very different, um, you know, in terms of the other games were out at the time. And there were all these new sort of games breaking into new genres, which was just incredible, really. Um, you don't really get that these days, you know, a whole new sort of game genre being introduced. But back then, Hyper Olympics really was something different. You know, it was sports themes orientated. It was you know head to head, fast, frantic action, and the button mashing was you know was out of this world you know smacking that control panel to do the run um, was just crazy and then you know people did all sorts of tricks to try and 
make themselves go faster and you know they use like the 20 cent piece to to rattle it over the uh over the run button to try and make them run faster do all sorts of stuff like that and of course the control panels used to get absolutely wrecked and this one that we're picking up actually is is sort of no different really <laughs> it's control panel doesn't look doesn't look that crash hot uh, but that's you know that's what I loved about that game. You could just smack the hell out of that control panel to try and you know get the get the best time. And look, it's a four-player game, but you can only play two players at the same time for all the running events and all the other events. You've got to go turn about. So really, it's ideally suited just for the two players really um, at a time. Otherwise, it just takes too long to go through you know one at a time through four players on the other events. But still, it's pretty cool. And you can get it in a cocktail form as well, not just the stand-up. Uh, although I've never seen a, a cocktail here in Australia. Um, I don't think they really come up that often. So, yeah, straight away I thought that was cool. And I've been playing this game even with my kids. My kids love it, um, you know, playing it on MAME. Uh, but again, it's sort of, you know, you've got to have the button layout nice and clear and, you know, to, for you to be able to really smack those buttons. And on the main box, those buttons aren't really ideally set up or placed to do that. So, you know, having a dedicated cab to this game is actually an awesome idea. You know, <laughs> I just wish I had more room for these dedicated games because I think the more you get into this hobby... And the more you start collecting games and when you get original games you suddenly realize how cool it is to have that original game original cabinet original controls and play it how it should be played because it makes such a big difference to the whole experience of the game so the first thing that i i, I thought was you know all this went through my mind about the hyper olympic when i saw this cabinet and and that was cool and I, and I, and I, I literally I, I sent a message to the guy that night and it was late it was like 2 in the morning <laughs> I thought I hope he's got his like you know um, the privacy thing on out of hours I hope I didn't wake him sorry <laughs> if I did uh, if you're watching uh, but yeah I, uh, I sent a message and just said listen I'll, I'll take it you know it's one of those things for the price it's a sight unseen type of purchase again it's not one of those ones you want to hang around and wait for the thing's going to go i've said it multiple times you just don't get very many original cabs here in in australia so when they they do come up um you really and and they're you know a cabinet that you want you really got to jump on them so i sent it off went to bed woke up in the morning you know i don't know i mean 80 80 people had visited the page and he only just put it up on on the sunday um, gosh, this guy's going slow. What's going on? Um, so, you know, 80 people had already seen it, which surprised me. I thought, well, it's probably already gone. I mean, half the time when they sell, you know, the ad stays up on Gumtree for a little while longer. So anyway, woke up in the morning and uh, sure enough got a, a message to say, yeah, sure, let's do it. So I was really over the moon. Now, as the morning wore on, and I, you know, I was having another look at it, um, and I, you know, arranged for it to, for, to be uh, picked up tonight. But in the morning, I, it suddenly dawned on me that there was something about the cabinet that was, you know, was tugging on a memory in the back of my mind. And of course, straight away, I thought that's that's a defender cabinet. It's a it's a Taito defender cabinet. Uh, or Tato, I keep saying Tato, Tato, either way, right? So it's a Tato Defender. Now, Defender is another just amazing game, um, you know, in terms of breaking into new ground. It just the uh, awesome graphics, the sound effects were just unbelievable. And that was another game. I might as well launch into a little story. I hope you like my little stories, by the way. <laughs> were you guys fast forwarding past this space? Tut, tut. these stories are what it's all about guys <laughs> so with defender i used to i used to cycle i don't know it was probably 10ks little 11 12 year old greg cycling 10 10ks or so to get to the get to a dairy which is like a deli or a corner store <clears throat> you call them dairies in new zealand 
and uh, and this dairy it was funny because you'd go in inside and and it was like it was dark um, which was really weird it was it was like dark like an arcade and yet it was a quarter store so how bizarre is that and um, when you walk in the door straight away to the right hand side you can see the defender and a kicks machine and um, I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. That was the first time I saw a Defender machine. But I, in fact, I probably heard it first because it was cranked up. And that sound, those sound effects, when you first hear those sound effects, it's just unbelievable. Then you look up at that machine and you see all the exploding graphics, you know, when the machine explodes. It's just, it was just awesome. And uh, I just stood there watching it with my mouth open, just like, oh my god, what is this? And a guy was playing it at the time when I first saw it, and watching him mash all the buttons. I mean, look at the buttons on the on the controller. This this machine just broke barriers left, right, and centre. Uh, it was just a it had such an impact on me growing up. So you know, I, I put in a, in a few twenties and, and had some games. But it's so, it was so hard, and for those of you that you know play Defender for the first time, you probably get put off because it is—it's very difficult when you first start. You really have to get in the rhythm. You got to get handle all those controls, and of course back then, again, you know all those controls were very unique. It's not like today where you got you know a controller with you know, tons of controls on it, and you know players these days can can memorize uh, all sorts of combinations with you know 14 buttons, but. <laughs> Back then, we'd gone from Space Invaders, from shooting with one, you know, one fire button to, to something like Defender. Um, so it was just crazy, crazy to watch, unbelievable. So yeah, this cabinet, I knew when I saw it. I thought that's a Defender cabinet, and then I thought, well, hang on, what's what's going on here? This is because it's a it's a Taito cabinet. It's you know clearly branded on the side. It's 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 one direct from Japan. And I think if you followed some of my other videos, you'll know that you know we have leisure allied industries here um, that do all the local cabs and all kinds of weird and wonderful versions of the originals. Somewhat annoying actually, because I really like the originals. Um, but this is this is this is clearly a Japanese one, and I'm sure we'll be able to confirm that with the uh, with the tag on the back. That's what I'm expecting. I did see on the marquee though, on the marquee header, I can see the leisure allied logo stamped clearly on the Hyper Olympic uh, marquee. So I suspect that it was a kick, because this is a Konami game, I mean it could have been licensed by uh, Taito, which is, or Taito, um, which is, you know, usual, like I've got my um, Taito uh, Missile Command, which is obviously licensed by Atari to Taito, so so, it's, so it may very well be a licensed game, but it just doesn't seem right because that cabinet, when I look at it against the, you know, the Defender release, even the bezel is the Defender bezel, you know, and the control panel for Hyper Olympic uh, in this cabinet is really plain. It's like, I think maybe Legend Allied had a kit and they had a kit for that those tight open. Uh, machines for that that type of cabinet, and the kit would be their control panel, and maybe they you know they just put that little bit of red and black on either side to tie in with the cabinet um, and the marquee, you know, and then you just obviously swap the board over and away you go. So that that's what I suspect. So that brings me back to a bit of a conundrum because this cabinet, of course, uh, being a tighter cabinet and everything, is completely different to the track and field one that you get in the US. I mean that one's you know purpose for track and field. It looks pretty cool actually, um, but you know I'm not, obviously not going to have that. It's this completely different cabinet. So what do I do? Because this is potentially a you know a real conversion done by Leisure, leisure and Allied Industries, um, but really it's a Defender cab, and you know and I love Defender. Uh, but I also love Hyper Olympic and I love the fact that with Defender with that control panel that's the sort of game you want to have the real cab because of that control panel so you know 
maybe it doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I'm sort of thinking in my mind, I want to I want to try and pick up the defender pieces for it, and not turn it back to a defender, but actually, you know, be able to maybe just swap between the two. And I think that would be pretty cool. I, I think I might sort of use it quite often as a, a defender cab on my own, and then you know, when when we're having parties and stuff like that. You know, swap in the, the Hyper Olympic because Hyper Olympics is a great party game, guys. It's just awesome. It really is. Uh, as a party game, people will really want to play it, whereas they won't probably want, want to play Defender as much. So that's what I'm going to try and do, but that's going to be tough as well because even the control panel for Defender on that cabinet, being a Taito cabinet, is different to the US Defenders because, again, the US Defenders are, uh, you know, from Williams, are a completely different cabinet again. So we, you know, I keep running into these issues where, you know, you've got different control panels, different overlays uh, for the ones that we had here in Australia, either direct through, uh, you know, Taito from, from Japan or through the re-releases um, from Legend Allied Industries. It's a real, real challenge to find parts. So anyway, I'm going to reach out and, and, and see if I can get those parts. Regardless, I'm going to have a Hyper Olympic and... Um, and that's going to be super fun um, but the problem is is well, I've got nowhere to put it <laughs> I've got zero room as you know I have got no room uh, and I actually have no room actually even out in, in, in the garage I've got stuff out there and there's just no room to actually pick this game up we've got a bit of light but I think it will come up and we have a scrambled screen but I think We've got a hum for sound. I can see that's the, the graphics for, the, for the, the main display. To me, it actually looks like it's just the vertical or horizontal holes out. Yeah, that's the starting graphic. That's the, um, the, the running, so maybe the sound's not working. So we're gonna get in the back here and just have a look at the monitor controls just to see if we can get this going. Okay, so we've got the back off here and the chassis looks, actually looks pretty clean. Everything looks pretty clean in here except for the bottom, which looks pretty dirty. Okay, well, we're going to uh, adjust the monitor and see if we can maybe just uh, fix it with some horizontal vertical hold magic. <laughs> we'll see. Let's try horizontal hold first. So maybe we do have a chassis problem. I don't think we're getting any action with the horizontal hold there at all. So that's fine. Um, I need to take the chassis in and get it checked. Right, so we are home again, or going home again. So what have we learnt from this session? Well one thing that the cabinet size did surprise me in a lot of ways actually. It surprised me getting it into this car because I, I thought it was actually smaller. And now it's actually, you know, only just really fit. Um, I guess it's one of those things, you know, when the when a cabinet is outside or in a big open space, they always look small. As soon as you bring them inside, they can actually, you know, feel like they're quite imposing. So it'll be interesting when I get it, you know, inside into the theatre, um, how imposing it, it will be. But it's nowhere near the size of an AP, you know, my APB cabinet or the championship sprint. So you know it's definitely not that sort of size where do you just trail it to pick those things up so anyway <coughs> um, we're all done there's probably not a lot more to say other than you know I was thinking on the way here when to, to pick this up it's the little things in life that you can enjoy right it's you don't have to spend lots of money you don't have to be a millionaire you don't have to be rich to have a good time and to really enjoy something you know if you've got a really strong passion you can do anything and and, and just enjoy it you'll go to any lengths to do what you want to do you know I mean this is this is crazy I mean it's such a little thing but I mean to to go out tonight make two trips to get the game home and you know it, it's a passion and um, with that passion I think you know you can always do do good things so live life enjoy yourself you know do your passions do your hobbies if you like arcade stuff you know do more of it it's a lot of fun so guys anyway until next time <clears throat>
hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to again seeing you on the next one and uh, tell your friends and all that good stuff if you like the video please give it a like and um, we'll see you next time until then take care ciao for now you must continue you can do it you are amazing the theater is now closed.